the town. Got a little bit of what it's like. Hilly, curvy, bushy. You turn the corner and there's a seven million dollar home. You're like, man, I'm in the wilderness and no, just past a Lamborghini. So a little upscale, a little pinky out. It was rocky and there was a dip. And then my freaking hitch. Good thing it was a B and W hit like that. It may have jeopardized the weld if it was another crappy hitch company. Yeah, boys. So we can use that boat ramp, but they got it closed. Oh, because the see how see where it drops off at the end. It's not enough ramp. It's us. I went to go flip a rock over to put in this low spot because even though it looks like I got the best parking spot in the house, there's that low spot that keeps busting my so differential. <laughs> every time I drive. Yeah, I flipped a rock over and there was a scorpion right off the bat. First rock I flipped over. First one. That's how and it I is like, when there's an infestation. As soon as I went to flip it, I said, I wonder if there's gonna be a scorpion in here. And I went, oh, there's a scorpion. What What made you think scorpion? Yeah, that never even crossed because my mind. We're in the desert. Because of you. Yeah, we're in the rocks. You always talk about these scorpions yeah. and it's rocky and it's like desert. Uh -huh. Like this looks like scorpion territory. He was like this. Yeah, but usually like they blend in so well. Oh, God. Uh, you got to keep the chunk you rig, Roy. What is it? Two flukes. Two flukes? Yeah. Double we can do that. I thought we were only one over. I seen guys throwing two fluke rigs in there, double. We can throw a double? Yeah. Really? Two no, no, so Aaron, to clarify this real quick? To be nice to Aaron, we should read the rule instead of calling at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. yeah. Alabama rigs and similar umbrella type rigs are not allowed. The use of braid or other line to attach a single stringer hook to a lure is allowed, as long as the line is no more than two inches in length. So, what does that mean? <laughs> it means one lure. I've thrown it last year. In the oh, tournament? Here. Yeah. It must be legal then. You must have read it. We're we'll calling there. Can we use a donkey ring? Double flip. <laughs> yeah. That is simple. Double flip. Can we use two lures on one line? I got one time on. Double flip. What you call it? A donkey rig? A double flute. Yeah, double flip. Yeah, it last year. Okay, so a double flukes good. Any two lures is fine? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay that's what we need to know. We learned something this week. We learned something? Yeah. If we ever have a chance at HEB, we need to go. That's Everything's cool. in stock. It's crazy. <laughs> Nothing's out of place. It's full. Everything's full. It's beautiful. <laughs> My drink's empty. Well, we're two weeks earlier than we were last time when we came here in 2018. And the other difference is the water's 10 feet lower. So that puts this lake about 24 feet below full pool. So the last time I was catching these fish, they were really keyed in on a shad spawn. And um, they were pretty much completely done with the spawn and they were on the shad spawn and these fish were schooling and you, I was catching them on flutter spoons and jerk baits and they were all out deep and so I'm assuming if we're not there yet that is is that's just now starting where those fish got to be getting in those same places I don't think there'll be enough fish uh, in a spawning mode that's gonna be a factor so main goal in practice is figure out the shatter spawning I think that water temperature is around 65 so it's a little low I think the magic number of most of my experience with shad spawn is around 67 68 
so it's a few degrees low so I don't know if that'll be a thing yet but those fish still should be biting topwater jerk bait spoons and they should be still in those places Steady, steady hooking up. And I like that because I ain't mean, dealing with treble hooks and all the other kind of stuff. But then they they got off the chatterbait mid morning or so, and uh, so I started throwing the, the jerk bait, which seems to be the best. Seems to be the best thing. Oh, he's gonna have that little grill pack. Yeah, sure. Oh, hey, we got some lightning still out there. <laughs> yeah. I think it's moving like pretty, pretty northeast, you know? First, I was going like this. Looks like about like 11, they got another cell that might have to take some cover. But there's plenty of boats left. Oh, yeah. It might be a good time to do some tackle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. About a scoreable bass right there. That's about one six or one eight. He'd be borderline. Normally we have a two pound minimum, but this lake's so full of small ones that we wouldn't have had much to, to score. I'm gonna go ahead and stop practice a little early. We got some bad weather coming in. It's steady raining not really learning a whole lot in these conditions uh so pretty pretty much know what i'm gonna be doing tomorrow so now i'm going to make sure i got all my tackle right uh, game time for me in the morning so i got to make sure i got everything right respool some reels uh, change some hooks and things like that and get ready to get after it All right, practice is over for me. Uh, I got off the water a little bit early. We had some bad weather, but we have to be off the water in, in a little bit anyway. Um, but it was a little tricky. The, it's been cloudy and rainy for practice, and that's it's gonna be the same conditions tomorrow, but um, I feel like the best way to get bites is with, uh, with a jerk bait, uh, top water, or uh, three quarter ounce chatterbait and fishing those deep floating docks and fishing channel swing channel swing bluffy main lake stuff and just basically chasing the shad spawn in the morning if there is some it's just starting so you could show up to a marina and it'd be going down or you could show up to one and it not be there so I'm gonna go to where I saw a shad one marina I saw a shad spawn it's not happening everywhere so that's all I can go off of is what I saw yesterday morning. This morning I didn't see one at all. Uh, so it's one of those deals where you, you can get right real fast right off the bat, but then it kind of slows down a little bit and that's when I start throwing a jerk bait a lot. I'm catching them on a chatterbait around the marina slips and stuff whenever the shad spawn's going on. I like the chatterbait because I can skip it, I can get it back in there and, and, um, and, and draw out some of those bites underneath those floating marinas. Uh, 
can't get them to eat the spoon. That's one of the big things I caught them on last time, but I think it's mainly because it's cloudy. Uh, so I'm gonna go out there and keep keep an open mind. But the the jerk bait, the chatter bait, and top water is my my three primary things I'm gonna have on the deck, and I'm gonna stick to those things all day long. And catching a lot of non scoreables, a scoreable here is one eight, a pound and a half, and so. Um, you know, I caught a lot of fish in that range, whether it was like a 1.4 or a 1.10, I don't know, they all kind of look the same. So every now and then you'll catch a pretty good one or whatever, but it's random. So a uh, tournament starts in the morning and I feel pretty good about it, but you still never know what's going to happen with every fish counts because you just don't know if you're going to get enough bites and you don't know if you get enough scoreable. So, one of those deals just gonna go out there and start fishing and see what happens might be leading by the end of the day might be last place i don't know thanks for watching make sure you tune in on episode two to find out what happens so click below subscribe and see you there